Hi everyone, how's it going team here and this is BXJS, a show about building things with JavaScript. Today we're doing another proposal, this time around there was actually more than one proposal that was voted equally, so I took the most interesting one from my perspective and that is going to be the progressive web apps and service workers. This is what we're going to be doing today and um, I think we're going to build a simple progressive web app that will work offline that will have all the progressive web app things like push notifications and things. I'm not really sure which ones uh, we're going to have today so I haven't thought about the app itself but we're going to figure something out as we go, right? Um, now let's start by talking about the progressive web apps and what they are. So there's, as usual, there's an awesome PWA list. Of course there is. And um, I think the most, um, so there's like a bunch of definitions of what is progressive web apps, right? But I like mostly the one that is used by Eddie Osmani here. So he says that a progressive web app uses modern web capabilities to deliver an app-like user experience. And the general idea is that basically progressive web apps are something that should replace Electron JS in the future, right? So Electron is something that should be, uh, should no longer exist once we get all the capabilities in the browser itself. And this is what the standards have been working towards to lately, right? So uh, what things define the progressive web app? Well, there's a bunch of things. First of all, you get the web app manifest that allows you to install the app on the desktop. And uh, like in this here example, you can see the installation on the mobile phones and you're probably familiar with it if you have Android or iOS that's been in there for a while. But I'm actually gonna show you today that you can do the same in desktop in the latest versions of Chrome. So this is something that has been recently added and is now kind of getting standardized and getting pushed to desktops as well, uh, which is really, really cool actually. And the first huge step for um, getting rid of Electron essentially. Second thing is add a home screen banner. So something similar once again is now on desktops, at least in Chrome. I believe the uh, Firefox is gonna follow suit here. Second thing, or I guess that's the third thing now, it's service workers. So service worker is a special script that runs in the background and does a bunch of things, including caching requests. We are gonna use that for this, um, as well as push notifications and all that kind of thing. So I think we're at least gonna do like cache, request, caching, request caching and offline work. We're gonna see if we can add something else um, and notifications as I already said. And okay, we already mentioned notifications. And uh, yeah, I think all the other things are actually not as relevant. So most of the Chrome and Google uh, progressive web apps, as you might imagine, are built on Polymer, which is their own framework, and they're pushing it by heart. But because I'm lazy, we're going to use Next.js as usual, and we're going to extend our Next.js app to actually work online and offline, right? So let us get started. I'm going to create a dear, I'm going to say, so what kind of app we're going to create? Um, hey, Dragon, how's it going? Uh, thank you for the, thank you for the uh, proposal, by the way, this is really interesting. Microsoft is going to, oh, yeah, right, that's true. So Microsoft is also crawling the web and is going to put the progressive web apps directly into the Windows 10 store, which is kind of really awesome when you think about it. So basically, because, you know, the progressive web apps do the, already deliver the experience very similar to the native apps. And, you know, since we have Electron, it's like very, very close. So Microsoft decided, why the hell, let's just crawl the web and put the progressive web apps in the store right away because you can just install them with a click of the button. And this is, in my opinion, really great. That is indeed uh, true and is very cool. All right, so what can we do? We need something that should work online and offline and should have push notifications. Um, we can do a notes app with expiration, like maybe not to, I mean, to do list sounds boring, but we can just make a nice note app and have like notes expire. And if, if the note is close to expiration, we're going to send out the uh, push notification saying, Hey, you should have a look, your note is about to expire. So let's do this. Uh, I'm going to say it notes PVA example. Um, uh, maybe not note, maybe say notes, right? Because it's not going to be one note, it's going to be many. Um, let's do this, notes, okay. It init, npm init minus y. Right, let me fire up the VS code over here. 
full screen, increase the size. Um, so we're gonna add next React and React DOM. There you go. <laughs> if you can see, actually, I'm adding this so frequently, it's literally my first autocomplete things. I'm building everything with Next.js lately. All right. So um, the thing is that uh, the word progressive and progressive web apps also means that the app should actually work on the older browsers that do not support all those features as well, right? So it's sort of the progressive means that it progressively enhances itself to be better and better when the browser has those cap capabilities and allows it. So we are actually going to start, uh, let me just git ignore node modules. Um, so we're gonna do, make dear pages, touch pages in the yes, there we go. Just to make sure everything works, I'm gonna say um, export, no, export defaults each one hello world um i probably need to set up the scripts as well uh come on okay so we need the start script which is gonna be next we need build script which is gonna be next um, we probably don't need build and, and production ready because we don't have time for that so we're gonna go with that okay yarn starts uh, so yeah, as I was saying, since the app is progressive, the first thing that you actually have to do is build the normal web app that would just work. And my window opened over here, so I'm gonna drag it here. So theoretically, we should be able to open localhost 3000 and see our page, right? So everything is good. Uh, let me increase the size, maybe open the dev tools. And uh, that is a lot of things and increase the size of the dev tools as well. So you can see everything nice and easy. There you go. Okay, so we are ready to develop, right? So we are gonna have a simple app that will have uh, nodes, right? So uh, we actually would need a custom server here. So I'm gonna fire up the Next.js um, documentation because I never work without documentation, I think. I always forget things and uh, I'm always looking them up. Right, so we are gonna have, let's just take an examples and use the uh, version with custom server we can probably use, I don't know, as micro, no, we need more than micro, we need fastify, yeah, meh. You know what, let's go with express. I'm too lazy to think about it too much, so we're just gonna say um, da -da 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 -da, touch server JS. I am just gonna copy this thing, and uh, we are gonna refactor it a slight bit. So save this yarn at express, right? So we're gonna have express.js here. Um, const, we're gonna have run method, which is gonna be a sync because I like a sync await. This, then this means we can await prepare app and remove one, um, one degree of intendation, which is always nice and makes it easier to read things, right? So uh, we run thing, okay this uh, then we don't need really need any of that right now right so we actually need only handler so we can just do this okay and then we can listen yes that looks fine now what we need is we need to get all notes right so this is going to be a method that is going to return some notes in this case i'm just going to return an empty array for now um, that's not actually correct. Uh, wait a second. I forgot how Express.js works. Hell if I remember all of that stuff works. Okay. Um, guides. Hello world. Yes, please. Rest send, right? So we just do rest. Whoops. Yes, we can just do rest send empty array. And uh, that's, that's basically all we need, right? So we also need post methods that is going to be create a node. And for post method, we would actually need um, body parser, I think. Maybe, maybe we would easier take the Fastify. Oh yeah, Fastify is now version one, so we can actually take that. Yeah, okay. Remove the Express and add Fastify. Nah, come on. How come is that not a shortcut in Yarn? Okay, we're gonna go with Fastify because it just have everything in one package. So we are gonna have a easier time essentially setting it up without any like adding body parses and two billion dependencies. I'm gonna have Fastify here and uh, I'm gonna copy this bits and I'm gonna put all of that here. 
Right, once again, we don't need any of that, so we're gonna leave one of them. I'm gonna say that we get, get notes. This should return, um, now we need the Fastify docs. Fastify, I think it was res reply send or something. Yeah, I think it's, well, yeah, reply send. So I say reply here, it's gonna be a reply, whoops, reply sends MTRA. So for now, we're just gonna send MTRA out. Now we're gonna have a post method for notes that's gonna say um, notes from request body, right? And uh, gonna send it back for now. So we're not gonna be storing it in any way, but maybe, I mean, okay, for now we can just actually do this, right? So we can say we have this notes array that is just empty. We are gonna send it back and uh, whenever the new note comes, we say notes push note. It's gonna be a very, very stupid database, right? And um, yeah, I think that, that maybe, yeah, that looks fine. So we just send it back because why not? Um, that's basically all we actually need in this case. So we can simplify this thing a bit um, like this and uh, Maybe we can simplify this as well, like this, right? So then we don't need this res, res, rec, rec, which looks ugly. It looks nicer. And I think we are good. So we are gonna be node server JS, right? Darn start. Theoretically, that should start our uh, window over here. Now the server. And uh, if I didn't screw anything up, it should work. It does work. So we have our basic server, right? Now the index page. So we are gonna import React from React and um, export default class uh, index or I guess home page. Um, extends React components. Constructor. So we're gonna have a constructor that has uh, props called super props. We don't actually have any props here, but whatever. We're gonna have state, which will have um, notes, right? And it's gonna be MTRA by default. We're gonna change that in a bit. And uh, then we're gonna return div. This is gonna be like JSON stringify notes, right? So let's just start with that. Um, the state notes, right? There we go. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. There we go. Okay, so now we get the empty array. Now we need that um, Next.js method for server side rendering. Uh, what was it? Like get initial props, right? We're going to copy that. We're going to plop it over here. And uh, we don't care about the request here. We also need the uh, fetch. Where's the fetch thing? Uh, uh, come on, there was the non fetch or whatever it was. Was it non fetch? It's a morphic unfetch, right? Always forgetting the name of that library. Yarn add is a morphic unfetch. So we're going to copy this unfetch from here. Right. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to fetch. So we're going to say const notes is going to be await fetch. I'm going to hard code the um, address. Because like if you're using isomorphic fetch uh, on the server side, you need to provide the full address, right? Because it doesn't know what the slash is. In this case, uh, normally you would add the config which will have this host name included. But in this case, I'm just going to hard code it because I don't really have time to set up the config. Um, so we're going to say get notes, and then we're going to say r r json, right? So we're going to resolve into json, and then we're going to return notes, and we're going to say prop. Uh, props note that uh, come on notes or empty array uh, and we actually don't need this rec because we don't care right right okay so they can add a new note here so we're gonna say texts um let's just figure out what the fields will be right so we're gonna have let's say we're gonna have title it's gonna be notes title tests note text test um and we were talking about uh whoops i forgot to start thing right yarn start and we we're talking about the push notifications and to have them come on start already that is for whatever reason empty 
is it empty i don't know can we get localhost notes right uh okay we do get notes so why the hell are they empty good question our json uh we return notes props notes super props am i messing something up so get initial props res json status is props okay no we are um, that is a bit weird. Why doesn't it, it wait? It should pass them into the constructor as well, right? If it's server side, um, get initial props. Now that we can ignore that user agent, this props user agent. Uh, blah blah blah, which is a sync method. Props. Uh, oh yeah, okay, because it's a sync, it might no. It, I mean, if it server side rendering, it should be. Is it empty? This weird okay so let's see here's the question json stringify so state let's just do it this way and then props uh it's gonna be this state uh, no this props notes right i might be forgetting how it works but it is also empty get initial props i am doing this correctly aren't i Rest, await, fetch, await, JSON, return. I'm returning it, right, right. Yeah. Oh, fa. Okay. This is the problem. There we go. Okay. I'm. This is like one of those things about a sync await that can screw everything up. When you forget to await something, you don't immediately see it. And uh, I don't know if there's. Um, it would be really neat if there's a linter rule that could actually fix it, but it's really hard because you don't know which functions are a sync, right? Like you know, the fetch is a sync because it's a fetch, but like if you write your own, eh, is it even possible? That could be a nice linting rule. Um, okay, so we now have that. So we are going to, I guess, I mean, we can add the head thing, right? Um, header, where's the head? There you go. So we can um, just import that. We don't need document here, we need the head. So I just wanna include the bulma.js here just so that we have a slightly nicer style essentially. And, um, so we can say we have a fragment here. So we'll have a head and then we have a body. Head. We're gonna have a title that will say we will we will need head. No, I think we should actually create a layout, right? Layout. Uh, they have a probably yeah. It probably will be a better way to create a layout because we'll have a two pages components. Um, layout JS, and uh, I am just gonna copy all of that stuff, put it here. It's gonna be layout we are not going to be loading anything we actually don't ever need this so we all we need is export defaults we need this we're gonna have children here children here we go and we are going to return yes this thing okay um not going to fly so what am i missing um oh i guess my form like doesn't it not support fragments short notation oh what oh god damn it oh right okay so it probably will work if i do it this way right there we go but the linter doesn't seem to support that so i'm gonna call it properly okay children so i'm gonna do that we don't need fetch here so we're gonna say a title that is gonna be notes PVA uh, example, right? And we're gonna have Ulma IO just for styling. Um, I'm gonna insert it as a KDN uh, script. So we need library here. Da, copy link, there we go. So we insert the link here. And um, yeah, I think that should be good enough. So now we need uh, this head anymore. We import layout from components layouts and uh, wrap everything into layout, right? We don't need this stuff, we need this stuff. Um, I forgot slash again, there you go. So now we should have us uh, head of undefined what? 
add next document i think no wait a second next document is the wrong thing right head and it's not what i want is it like separately installed ah okay there you go that's what i want it should be next head and it's also not destructed right? it's like this i think this is how it should be there you go okay now it looks nicer so now let us render the uh, notes in a nice way so we're going to say class name container so it's going to be wrapped in container it's going to be slightly indented there we go and now we're going to use bulma i think we can use cards right so it has the card components that would fit perfectly fine for that case there you go i'm going to copy that and uh, i'm going to create a new component that is going to be called notes export or default i guess i should import react react as well right and we're going to export defaults so we're going to have props here yes we're going to have notes and uh, it's going to export all of that stuff as probably some tag is not closed we don't really care about all of this so it's going to be notes text I don't care about the footer either we uh, this is going to be notes title and uh, we need to fix those class equals so i'm going to select them and say class name so we don't really need that more options thing so this is basically it right so we have the node component and uh, we're going to import it so we're going to layouts import node from components notes and um, what i'm going to do is i am going to say uh, this state notes uh, nope notes map notes to notes and note will be equal note naming is slightly yeah but you know, should do okay so if we add more notes to the server um da -da -da -da. I think about it where's my server there's my server so if we add another one one two three for example right we need to restart the thing um no fragments also work with the older babels but i think the problem is that the either my eslint or prettier don't support that like short notation so i mean they, they worked and they compiled properly it's just the problem was that the something gave an error so whatever i can write the full form that's not a big deal Okay, um, and we're gonna say, yeah, you know what? Let's add, I guess it makes sense to actually add IDs. So I'm gonna say ID one, ID two, start that and uh, layout. So there you go. And this key is gonna be note ID. There we go. Refresh that, that should not give any errors. There we go. Probably a good idea to format those cards. I think there was a grid layout here somehow. Um, uh tiles there you go tile layout so what do we need div class tile okay okay so is it enough if we just say that this is a tile i wonder no not exactly okay so how do i do that correctly a div class tile is ancestor okay we say this is a container i guess we can try to say that this is a tile is ancestor okay better slightly better but uh seems it still screws with the formatting so let's try play that work okay slightly better and now i believe we should just say this is tile here or maybe we should yeah i guess we can actually have to wrap it in tiles right because otherwise it will uh, change the formatting of the card which we don't really want Okay, there we go. Um, they are slightly big though. So how do I vertical is parents is parents uh, is child. Say it is is child, and I think yeah, there you go. Okay, that looks okay. Cool. We got those things going. Um, now we need um screen where we can press basically. So we need to uh, add the link, I guess. Let's make uh okay let me see the link so we are gonna make header clickable and then lead to another page which basically will allow 
editing, for example, right? or item. We don't need editing, right? We need adding of uh, notes. We don't actually want it here. We want it over here. And in this case, we're going to say that this is like, let's start with a simple button. I'm going to say add notes, right? I mean, we already need a next page for it. Don't do we want the next page? I guess we could just do it all in one app, right? So I guess it's fine. Yeah, I think we're just going to stick to one page. It's going to be like a one page app. Because I'm feeling too lazy to add a second page and transitions between it and all that kind of stuff. So let me see where's our form stuff. Let me just copy the template because I am lazy as hell. Um, so you are going to be a complete form example somewhere. Maybe with a... Uh, we need two inputs. Uh, uh, yeah, something is not closed. There we go. Okay. Gonna be... Ah, come on. I think it's better to extract it in a component. So we're gonna say create node.js and I'm gonna copy all of that. I'm actually gonna copy the whole thing. We are going to kill those things. We're gonna kill the anamorphic fetch. We're gonna kill that. It's gonna be called create notes. And uh, we're gonna say we have text and we have title for now, right? And we have this, uh, so we're gonna have react fragment here. I kill all of that because it's not needed and you are gonna close with, uh, whoops, react fragments. Right, there we go. So now we need to fix those classes uh, name. There you go. And uh, do, 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 do. so there's gonna be title. Um, boom, 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 boom note title value this state title right so handle change uh, I guess title change e and this is going to be the set state title is going to be e target value whoops then we're going to have handle um Text change, right? So it's going to be e target. So we're going to say text. Text here. Text input value. This state text. And uh, now, okay. So we got the value on change. This is going to be, whoops, e. This handle title. Yep. It'll change e. Add that. That looks way nicer on change that stuff e this handle text change okay much better um then we have the add node button which on click will this handle adds e. okay so we are gonna add this handle e um you are gonna say e prevents default so that the page doesn't jump every time person presses the button and say this props handle new notes um this state so we're basically going to pass the current state as a new note now we are going to import create note from components whoops component create notes uh, um create notes right uh and we had the handle new note thing it's gonna be this uh add new notes note there you go okay so we have this add new note method which will take the notes and for now let's just console log it a new note okay um right so it's slightly screwed up uh for some reason so first of all class name oh i guess we need to actually wrap it into div right because then it's going to be formatted properly we do want a div here okay slightly better still not quite um what are we missing here style mm -hmm. is how can I make it better? What if I say that this is also a container? 
that doesn't change anything. So who of you has this margin? Okay, and you are margin bottom, but margin. Ah, okay, you have margin minus 12. Uh, how do I deal with that? I mean, I can just be lazy and do this margin bottom like 30 or something and uh, yeah there you go okay so this is not the solution you should be using in production but it works for us so i don't really want to delve into css is good because i'm terrible with it so i'm gonna go ahead and add test and some text here click add button and there we go uh we actually need we know a little bit about what we need to do is after we did that we need to say this set state text title so we reset state right now if i click it now there you go okay so we now have the new node thing and uh now we need to send this uh new notes into the server so what we gonna do is say const notes await fetch uh we're gonna say notes uh and then it's gonna be method come on but am i missing oh it's gonna be a sync right so method is gonna be post and uh, body is gonna be hey don't you like where's my auto suggest for fetch so method come on okay for some reason i guess maybe it's broken because i imported fetch from this thing and it overrides i'm curious wait a second i know for a fact that uh, VS Code has a great auto suggest for fetch. Yeah, okay, there we go. Okay, so I guess it tries to pick up the bindings for the or the typings for the library that I imported, but it doesn't have any, which is slightly annoying. Okay, JSON stringify, I guess we could say body. It's gonna be stringify notes, and we're gonna do it like this. And uh, it's gonna be body yes and then uh headers we're gonna say that uh on and type application json right there you go then r r json so we should get the node back and uh, what we need to do is const new notes this state notes concat with you with note right and then this set state new notes so we basically save it we get it back and then um why don't you like oh okay added note let's call it this way uh, okay notes there you go this x okay so try this and some error unsupported media type why did i misspell something network um headers let's see am i forgetting so the payload looks fine that looks like json content type text play no why is it text plane content type oh headers uh, okay and i forgot to uncomment this the and there we go okay so it works if we refresh it's still there perfect okay so we got the addition right um now we wanted to uh so okay um we need another field which is gonna be the date time right because we wanted the push notifications for um expiration and uh, this is gonna be type oh, input type date time or i think there is a date time right so i don't know if it works feature is absolute may still work in some browsers that implementing date time local okay here's the question it's um okay i'm just gonna do it this way ah oh nice that's actually pretty neat so and you can actually get a native widget for calendar selection okay this is great we are gonna take that okay um expiration expiration time i guess time so first of all we are gonna say uh fires new dates 
what's the constructor there again 2018 um it was month so we are in march i think it's from the zero right date is seven is it from the zero i don't know if i remember that okay you know what we're just gonna say uh new date for now you know what it's gonna be gonna be like this screw that gonna do it like this okay so we got those two um expires yes and the fires change there you go so we whoops we expires empty E, okay this set state expires e target value there we go expires uh reset it to empty value right okay so we got that key prop why don't you oh right okay because i am not inserting it properly notes okay so note id is gonna be notes length we assign ID, restart that. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, so we now should have our stuff here. We maybe create the, go the expiration ID somewhere. Maybe, maybe, maybe here, like we got this main contents and then have this P here as notes expires, right? Okay, uh, but we need to format it properly. New date, dual locale string. It should be enough. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, so we got that nailed. Um, I guess maybe it just say expires at. Yes, it's basically already expired. Yeah, because it's the same date time we started it. Right. So let's try adding something. Um. So we're going to say um, 1940 notes. They're on the same key. Oh, uh, I'm an idiot because it should be length plus one here, right? There we go. Okay. So we got that. We got basically this is the core that is ready to be enhanced, right? So we got the note adding. Whoops. On. And we got the note adding, we got the date for expiration, we're going to say 1940 notes. Now renders, no errors, no anything. I mean, doesn't look too pretty, but looks fine. Uh, basically workable. So uh, here's the thing, right? So let me first go into this, git add, uh, git first ignore dot next. Yarn error, we don't need that. Git add, okay, add this. Git commit basic notes web app, right? So we created the basic web app that essentially does nothing but adds notes right now to the server. In this case, we're using array as a storage, but you could as well use a database. Now, uh, what do we need to make it a progressive web app? Well, we need to, first of all, allow it working offline, right? So that whenever a user has a poor connectivity, he still will be able to create the notes. How do we do that? And read the notes as well. So how do you do that? Well, you do that with a web worker. Um, so a service worker, sorry, service worker and uh, now I need a guide for service workers because I don't remember how to properly insert them into the apps. Um, it is a script tag essentially. So what we need is, first of all, we need this static here. Uh, I think it's um, the, by default, they expose a static folder if I remember correctly. Yeah, okay. So we need this static folder. Go and uh, need our worker JS here, right? So I think MDN should have a nice tutorial on service workers. So we're just going to use that because I don't really remember all of the nitty gritty of that uh, as I am not really using them that frequently. Okay. Um, da -da -da, no service workers registering your service worker. Yes. So we are going to do this. 
is going to be our uh, code here in the index.js. So it's basically going to happen on components did mounts, right? So because this only should happen in the, uh, we can actually make it a sync and uh, make it nicer. So it's going to be register reg. Yes. And uh, we need to try catch that. I am messing things up. It should be a wait here. Try catch. Hmm. catch. Catch the error and say that registration has failed. There you go. Okay. Um, to them. Go and uh, service worker is going to be static worker, right? Scope root. We, we basically, I think we can just say register because we don't need scope here. And uh, if we refresh that, there you go. So our service worker is now registered. And if we look over here in the service workers, you could actually see that worker JS is, I mean, it's empty now, but you can see that it's actually registered and activated and running. And you can actually push and test uh, things using the dev tools, right? Including offline update on reload bypass networks and all that kind of stuff, which is really great. All right, so next thing is we have to edit our worker and um, thing is that uh, service workers allow you a bunch of things. One of them is interrupting or um, proxying the requests essentially, right? So whenever the request comes, a fetch request specifically, you can actually handle it. I don't know, do they have a nice image here that shows it? No, not really. Okay, so yeah. Um, we are, do they have a, come on, come on. I need some caching examples, self. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so we can use this self. Um, okay, wait a second, ESLint and, okay, you know what? Let me have a look, ESLint, lint and service worker. There has to be a service worker environment, right? This seems to be a blah, blah, blah. Pull request already approval. Okay, there's a pull request. Let's have a look how it's called. Just service worker. Including work, is it just worker? No. And service worker? No. Why don't you wanna work? Um, add worker environment. Okay, it's just worker. Um, why am I not, what am I not doing correctly? Come on. Uh, no, just mean yes. And, um, uh, what, what am I messing up? I just want proper, uh, yes, lint env worker. Whoops. Come on, um, any ideas, chat? What am I doing wrong? I thought, yes, lint env. Okay, so it's just like this, right? Why doesn't it like my thing? On with magic goes here. We are not yet at the magic part. Okay. Um, caches match. Okay, so we got the magic caches thing. I don't even know if that's... Uh... Oh, come on, let's see. All right, so what we need is we need the some sort of cache. I mean, obviously we can use like local storage. I think service worker have access to local storage. We just did the worker. Um, da -da -da, cache, da -da -da, cache, cache, cache. Install and activate populating your cache. Uh, oh, it actually has a cache API. Okay, this is something I did not know about before, but it seems to be experimental. Question is, does Chrome support that? Let's have a look here. Chrome, yes, it does since version 40. Okay, that is awesome. All right, so we can actually and just take this basically, right? And uninstall we need the cache. Okay, that's pretty awesome that there's an, like proper cache API and you don't have to invent anything yourself. 
um event wait until cash open v1 cash at all so we are gonna cash okay so this is caching style scripts and everything right so we are in this case we are gonna cache what do, what do we have here so we have index.js cache index.js so basically this tells the browser to cache those files uh, commons.js, main.js, right? Uh, I mean, okay, I guess in this case, we could just cache all of those, but that is actually not, uh, because I am doing the wrong thing, right? Because they are actually underscore next page index. So if we would run compiled version, it would be way easier to set up because, uh, then we wouldn't have this underscore next error page manifest, whatever the other, like basically everything that is related to debugging, right? Okay, comments. So we're gonna cache that. Um, in JS, there we go. I don't think we can cache Bulma here, which means that it's better to actually serve it yourself. And you know what, let's serve it ourselves because I don't want to cache it, right? So we're going to go to static. I'm just going to get it here. There you go. Okay, which means we need to change the layout and say that we uh, want static Ulma CSS. It means we can now cache it, right? Um, it might be that I am screwing it up and it won't actually work because the scope is wrong but we are gonna find out in a second. So what we need to do is we need to, I don't think that basically once the worker is registered, it's gonna stay the same. So this is still the old one, even though we refresh the page. What you need to do is you need to either register or update it. And there's like ways to doing it, but we can just hit the button for update right now and, uh, and have a look here. All right, so we got that. Um, theoretically now, we have disabled cache, we should not have that. Theoretically now, all of our stuff, so if we go offline, um, localhost slash, okay, it cannot load the document, so why it should be cached? Okay, um, we don't actually need that thing yet, right? So we can send that. Uh, to yeah, come on up this right so we got this seems to be working no errors in the console okay so we got this error with uh fetch finished get url okay this this is our worker caching thing so actually proxying things uh, for us right so theoretically Unless it cannot cache non like absolute links. Hmm. Kind of weird. Wait a second. So let me think. Uh, next JS PVA. This should be some example, right? Maybe I'm just missing something obvious here. So let's see. We got, we need a service worker. Do you have a service worker? Because if you don't have a service worker, you are not a progressive web app. Okay, you have manifest, but that's not really useful for us. I get maybe should it be also in a manifest? I think I think that's irrelevant, right? Yeah, that's irrelevant. So next JS PVA with a service worker, offline first support. Um having it as a core feature of next JS would actually be pretty neat. But um there is a webpack offline plugin. Um da -da 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 this is Oh, there's actually libraries with Webpack plugin. Okay, so maybe like, okay. <laughs> it's like on one hand, I really wanna just take the existing plugin and plug it in there and make it work. But on the other hand, that is kind of a easy way around. Let's see if someone actually figured out how to do that properly, shall we? Um, so this says the public index two. What the hell is index two? Welcome to Firebase hosting. Um, next JS and Hacker News PVA, yeah, okay, so deployments, app, okay, that's the app thing, we get the index TS, we get the pages, okay, we get the index, 
items from items okay mm, items right we got that we have the layout thing um that seems to be just a simple page the same way we did okay let's see this is the document this is our layout so we got yeah so we still have to add those all the meta tags and manifest but um where the hell do they not use service worker as well well, theoretically he should be here ah yeah there it is okay so um cash that pre -cash. so they are using pre-cash plugin as well so basically same people do that with plugin i guess it won't actually probably work with um manual addition right because the webpack generates those paths slightly differently every time cache is open cache name set of cached urls cache cached urls um what is cached urls do urls um okay cache keys yeah so basically it looks like when you're working with next.js you have to offload it to the um webpack because otherwise doing this manually is not very productive so why not let's do that okay that is slightly disappointing i would say but uh, i guess when you are dynamically generating stuff this is only to be expected right so we are gonna use what was the name of that plugin again there was a discussion here offline first yeah here no pick the wrong thing there we go okay close this so we are gonna go where's the plugin there was uh adios money himself saying the stuff here yeah there you go okay so we're gonna use that right and uh which means that we need to yarn add dev so we have free cash what we want to have and that means that we need to have a custom webpack config customizing webpack config right and uh the next config js so we are going to create that now so i am gonna config module exports i guess it makes sense to import bulma from webpack then so we got that and now we need to take this and uh this is galp is there a webpack web okay wait a second is he as web pre cache webpack there, there ought to be some web ah pre cache plugin is it a separate thing uh like webpack is web pre yeah okay looks like there's a separate plugin all right all right so uh right okay yarn actually can remove that because it seems to be a dependency of that plugin yarn adds def on the plugin we take the plugin put that here on right so we do that um public path okay so we need the public path once again uh, same goes for the well just about anything that is uh, poly, uh isomorphic uh, pff, isomorphic polymor poly, what am i trying to say that is server-side rendered that's what i'm trying to say all right so we got uh plugins right so this is what we actually want so we're gonna say config plugins push uh this is what we want to push right okay we don't need dev middleware here so i guess we can just kill that public path yeah we can make it slightly nicer it goes file name worker i guess it's going to be two workers Okay, we don't need all of that stuff either. So here's the question: Will it actually work? Because I, I've I've never used that plugin, so I'm not sure if that actually is going to work. Okay, let's see. So that adds second service worker or something? Not okay. Update. It's still my old one, right? Oh, here's the question. So theoretically, if we just put it in offline mode, no, that still fails. 
What am I missing? I guess, oh, right. I probably need to configure the worker itself now. Uh, register a service worker. Wait, does it generate the service worker itself? Uh, this will generate a new service worker at source bundles. Where is it generated? File name service worker. I don't really see it generated anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't generate it anywhere. Okay, so first of all, let us, where's my layout thing? Yes, we need to port, whoops. I guess I could install Bulma. Yeah, I guess it would be better to actually install Bulma yarn as well, yarn, uh, whoops. Yarn at Bulma, right? Okay, and we can kill that now. So yeah, I should have done that properly from the first try. Okay, and then we need to, uh, we need a CSS plugin as well. So layouts, import Bulma, not how it goes. S node modules, Bulma, oops. Huh? CSS. Where my CSS? Okay. What that we want to import, right? Okay. Um. Oh, not not modules. There you go. That's what we want to do. Now we need the next uh, CSS thing. Um. This is with external scope CSS. What was it? Site next CSS. This is what we want. Turn add CSS. Thank you very much. Um, how do we add it to, so yes, it's going to be like this. Um, and we're going to wrap, oops, we are going to do this, right? So we're going to be CSS and then we have our config, uh, whoops, start, there you go. So theoretically we should still get our app. It should still load, get nice styles. All right, there we go. So that more kind of, no, where's my Bulma? Um, it does invert it, but what the hell is it doing? CSS modules, true, it should not be CSS modules, right? And it doesn't seem to be CSS modules. Where's my styles? Network. Script. Okay, I'm just gonna unregister that. Oh, whoops, that's a wrong button. Request failed, worker JS. What kind of request failed? Worker two, okay. There are some failed requests. Oh, right, because we uh, there's actually yeah broken stuff now, so we can actually end this. Update, um, I deleted that, unregistered that. Is there a way to clean them somehow? On. Okay, so we registered this thing. Uh, that seems to, why is there still? Okay, deleted that, delete. Okay, now we have the new one and this seems to be working. How do I kill those somehow? Is there a way to clean that? Doesn't seem so. Bit weird, but okay. From other domains. No, other domains is not something I care about right now. Okay, now why does my Bulma client doesn't actually load? Um, yeah, so wait, what is it actually? How do I use it with other config? I guess I'm doing, oh yeah, okay. So it's a web, no, I am using it in this way, right? App pack s config options. So I guess, yeah, I guess this way. Theoretically, it should be working, right? Where's my, where's my styling? I see my styles. Oh, come on. Why does it never go the way I want it to go? Okay, let's see. Sources, xjs. Okay, so it loads this stuff. Where's my where's my else? Fable. 
doesn't load the styles for some reason. Um, did I add it? Yes, I added. So what if I import Ulma here? File extension SAS, okay. Uh, CSS. So that theoretically should work, right? Yet it doesn't. Are you kidding me right now? Um, hey, Severfin, I am using Visual Studio Code indeed, yes. Big Edge and Workbox. Uh, okay. Let me try to figure out why the hell Bulma doesn't load properly. Ugh, come on. So we got CSS. CSS is not here at all. Any errors in the console? So we kill that, restart. I mean, we could probably use SAS loader as well to make it work properly, but I don't want to deal with SAS. SAS is pain in JavaScript. At least for me, it was pain every time. Okay, Bulma CSS. Maybe that's because I am not importing it in the page itself. That'd be the case. No, that's not the case, right? So it's, I mean, it still should have been imported from here. Okay, why the hell? Ulma from. Okay, and uh, help. Not really. I am very confused right now. Node modules, Bulma, CSS. Bulma, CSS. Okay, so. Whoops. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. I want to do. Yeah, that looks like a correct CSS indeed. Um, I should click that. So, why are you not loading? And, uh, worker. Fresh ID, yes. In notes. EA example. Uh, map. So manifest. Modify. It skips it somehow. No, it doesn't. Don't cache burst your own matching. R yes, dev dependencies. Um, that's still so we modify the config a bit. Can it be that it loads it as a CSS module by default? Um, CSS modules should be should be false, right? By default. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. God damn it, I'm an idiot. Okay, is absolutely what I forgot to do. There we go. Okay, <laughs> damn it, I completely forgot that you need to manually include the CSS in there, uh, or the style CSS, and you cannot just import that cat damn it all right um now let us go back to this thing another example of using service worker provided with uh free cash okay so we got okay this is the service worker we can basically use that no but that thing should generate the service worker right so i am guessing that it probably lives here is that is that correct So let's see, worker, worker, failed. No, it's not there. Okay, so how did I call it again? So we got this service worker. Um, where is it said it will generate it in some folder? Public path, uh, output. Oh, I guess it's gonna be, wait a second. I'm guessing it's gonna be next bundles. No, not bundles, or maybe bundles. Nope, not bundles. Uh, dist, dist bundles. Oops, this. Nope. So it definitely is somewhere in the next. The question is where static. So for some reason, it does not generate the service worker. Public path, public pass. File name, service worker. Yeah, okay, let's uh, let's 
start that. It should generate the service worker somewhere here, right? Pages, not here at least, not in this either, right? No. So for whatever reason, it doesn't actually generate it. Uh, why? Service worker. That will fail, okay, because the service worker is actually not there. We'll generate a new worker and source bundle service worker. Um, I don't see why you define that. Source bundle. Dash plugin output. Separate cache. Okay, another example for user is provided by, uh, okay, no, no, that's not. So this should generate the new service worker, which is just not there. How am I supposed to work with that? Okay, um, let us see. So we do get this plugin. We push it to the plugins and it definitely works because we can actually see the total pre-cache size over here, right? For whatever reason, it doesn't generate the service worker it should have generated. Um, fire up the sublime here. Maybe it just doesn't call it properly. Service, no. Is it a main? I mean, that's a huge S file. Service, no. Commons. I mean, commons should be like React and stuff, right? No, it's not here either. The app is only our app. Maybe can be that the settings of the Next.js and screw with it. That might be the problem. Okay, let's see. Next size explorer is a great with partners or blah blah blah. Giving code splitting, nice production only service work. Caching would be neat addition. Ducks offline. Um, so is that issue? No, it's still open. So they are not resolved again. Example. Oh, there's actually an example with pre cache. Okay, so I've been doing things wrong all this time. All right, so let's see. A server is just a simple server. Path name. Ah, okay. So first of all, they serve it. This is what you need to do. So you need to rewrite the roots, but that actually doesn't matter for us. I mean, we can require it from next. So let's see the config. This is what's interesting for us, right? Uh, ah, that might be the problem. Um, so cache example. Yeah, we're gonna get this runtime caching. There's actually very little of settings here. So we I mean, yeah, why not? We can just use the uh, minify true, so we don't care about this. So I'm just gonna use this and uh, yeah, let's do a verbus true as well to just see what the hell happens. Theoretically, that's all we need, right? Config, yeah, it seems to be all and we don't even need this. Okay. That's just removing settings essentially. <laughs> Okay, that was easier than I thought. Now, L, um, next. And we still don't have service worker. Okay, I guess you do have to provide it to the server uh, yourself, right? So we probably need to do this here, for example. Uh, um, no, uh, we actually need quest here, I think. Request quest that. Uh, no, params for um, query. We need, okay, yeah, probably. Yeah, we can work on the request itself, right? So, was the where's the example? Come on, come here. We'll get the raw request. Parse the URL. Um, path name is service worker JS, right? We 
do this. Turn. Um, okay, we need those methods. We need to try and parse. Go and uh, theoretically, that's basically all they do, right? So they don't really do anything else here. Yeah. Okay, let's see if that works. So. No, that is still failed. Worker, um, why is it still failed? Actually, just do this, right? Just get all the requests and the path name, if path name, yeah, but I mean, it still serves the static file from there. So that means the static file should be in there. Well, I don't think it's actually generated at all. No, it is not indeed. Um, bundles again? That still doesn't seem to be the case. Am I missing something? You guys see what I'm doing wrong? Maybe, maybe you can see. Maybe it's obvious for you. Let me have a look at the chat. Um, doesn't seem like you guys have either any idea about this too. Okay, that is not very good. Um, right, let's see. Am I maybe using the wrong package here? So it's Webrecache Webback plugin, right? This is what we're using. It's Webrecache Webback plugin, right? Nodes. Uh, oh, wait, is that only works for production? Is that the case? Yes, that might be the case. Then it's slightly dis. I mean, it's, I wouldn't say disappointing. It actually makes sense on in production, but um, next build and uh, curve. yarn builds that might be the case then it's sort of so basically then it will only work if we build the production version for it which i guess is okay as well yeah okay so it's it's a production thing right and uh yarn serve refresh it now it will register service worker i imagine this service worker right now where is it? There it is. Okay, so it's auto generated one and it actually caches everything. So let me think. If I disable the network now and refresh, now it works. There we go. Okay, finally. <laughs> God damn it. All right, so here's the question. I wonder if their service worker actually also automatically caches the request. I doubt, right? So it has the install, has activate, it has the fetch. So it only handles the fetch to the uh, first point. Okay, so wait a second. Let's have a look how this SV whatever thing works. SV minus free cache. I imagine they only cache basically whatever is there in the web pack, right? So actually third party requests won't work which means we have to create our own worker, which we will register uh, registration successful. So we need to register our worker, which is gonna be static worker. Registration two succeeded, reg two, right? Um, right, so we're gonna have two workers here. Uh, one of them is going to be basically handling the caching of the resources and the other one is going to be handling the requests. And this is the interesting bit. So we're going to kill that. We don't need it here. So we outsourced it to the package. And it's actually really cool that you don't need to do this yourself. So uh, let's have a look. So basically what we're interested in is um, intercepting the fetches, which we do by doing this stuff, right? So if we log here event, we should theoretically um, probably should yarn start. So if we start that, it will fail to register the worker uh, that caches the resources, but it will register our worker anyway, because it's not served from... Um... Okay, it actually seems to be cached, I guess. Or yeah, okay, so service worker fails and... Uh... Our worker, so if we try to send something, 
you should theoretically see the logging. I don't remember if they finally implemented that. Uh, so you can actually see the worker logs somehow. Uh, well, I think we have this scope here. And uh, yeah, you should see them on the top as well. URL, okay. So there's our worker. Yeah, there's our worker actually logging whatever the fetches come in, right? Get URL. Okay, so what we need to do is we need... Okay, this is our cache match. So what, what we want to do is we want, when we were offline, we want to catch that response or request and put it, not just to cache, but um, store it inside, right? So we are going to service worker, fetch local storage, I guess. Uh, live data. So essentially what we want to do is we want to take the data that comes in from the fetch request. We want to put it into the local database into index DB or whatever. I don't remember what exactly the um, service worker has access to because it slightly differs from the browser. And then when the connectivity is restored, we're going to synchronize that data with the server, right? Okay, so create a DB. Yes, we do want to create a DB, I guess. Why not? And I guess it's going to be self kind event listener installed, right? So on install, we are just going to call create DB. Oh, that's not what I wanted. And uh, I'm going to rewrite it to be a arrow function because that's how I like it. Okay, open uh, notes, right? One function B, there you go. On store upgrade DB notes code notes DB key path ID so in this case we're not gonna put anything into it right how do I use it afterwards events wait until ah okay yeah that's that seems to make more sense so we do it on great DB but they don't return anything. So how the hell does it know? Yes, it just executes it and forgets it. Then I, okay, and open products. So we basically need to abstract this. So it's gonna be a DB name. So it's gonna be notes DB. It's gonna be a collection name is going to be notes right so we don't have to use magic strings anytime name and this is going to be action name yes um gonna do this right so we don't really need anything else in here we just need to create that collection what is this idb and where does it come from i feel like that we have not initialized it before that's like actually how you address it in service worker, really? Okay, I mean, I can do that. Cache assets, cache at all. Okay, so this is the caching. Um, offline storage, index to be promised, support for cache interface, support for index to be. So yeah, uh, where do they have the fetch proxy working as promises, working with fetch API concept. Okay, making a request. Uh, do they have a service worker related bit here? Okay, first of all, let me copy the bit with the reading from the database first, right? So I'm gonna just this bit and from DB. Okay. Now, fetch um, the index. Uh, of caching fill caching files um yeah, it's not exactly what we want so this is caching files yeah okay this is what we already did with the plugin essentially and we want the cache requests again okay this is again caching files fetch from cache this is again caching files Further service worker. 
gotta be a description of how to do that some i mean i could probably read the made you put so much crap on the screen api yeah we still have push api to implement so maybe we'll split that into two live streams because i don't know if we're gonna finish this today because there's still push notifications left and we still haven't actually um uh, implemented the uh, this stuff right so okay there we go so we got this event uh, whoops that is too much stuff we don't really need any of these things uh, this format that slightly okay you know what if you don't want I don't know environment I'm gonna say that there is a global self IDB and screw you. There we go. Um, there we go. Okay. Oops. Nope. All right. Uh, okay, there we go. So we got, wait, there is not. Well, DB. Don't you like self? So what? What? Unexpected use of self. Uh, no restricted globals. Oh, screw you. Yes, lint. No restricted globals. Off. That should do it. There we go. Okay. Um. So wait a second. So if we refresh that, we how do I clean those service workers? Why is there so many of them now? Work worker, where's the working one? Um this is the how do I actually clean them? Update on reload, there you go. And uh if we just send something, that doesn't seem to actually interrupt anything fetch loaded oh this is the service worker so where's my main worker we don't group them there you go okay so it's now it's a bit easier to look at the hierarchy now we need to have a look at the how do i can I remove them from here somehow redundant is there a clear button or something Air storage. I mean, we can just probably wipe everything. There you go. Okay. No, it's still. <laughs> okay, wait. Wait a second. Chrome Dev Tools Clear Web Workers. It's like, why is there so many of them? And how do I remove them all? This is very old. Um, I guess service workers, right? Not web workers. Service wo web workers is a specific type of subtype of service workers. I know how to uninstall them. Like, how do I remove all of that crap? Oh crap! Uh, come on. Okay, I think it was like Chrome Inspect or something. That is tiny. Service workers. Terminate. Thank you very much are still here all of them fail or whatever oh i know why they failed because i first tried to register the service worker that actually fails to register there we go idb is not defined okay so idb is not a valid thing here so we are not going to do that yet so let's try to just intercept fetch first can maybe try to okay fetching okay this is error i know that so theoretically wait a second is this now works yes effect there's no errors yet and if we click on now i don't understand why there's so much crap here errors where's the green one there green one there are errors i don't see any errors here and that doesn't show anything 
I have to like, oops, hit this, right? And I want to do this. I actually don't see any logs from it. Yes, there are two errors, but I don't see them. Cut off. Console is absolutely empty. Right, uh, let me try to send one more and maybe it shows up in that console. No, it doesn't. Why doesn't it intercept the requests? Does it need to respond with all the time? So if I just do respond with this, right? This is just like essentially does nothing, right? So we terminate that. We update this. Check this and send something. Nope. Uh, is that because I'm trying to register the second one that doesn't exist? Is a question. And up. Okay, update this, right? So we updated it. It is running. Pushing and pushing does nothing because we already have any handlers. Why is there two of them now? Update. Okay, inspect. Now let's have a look at the source. Uh, where's my source? There is no source, right? So this specifically inspects the, I guess, the uh, logs of it, but we should see the logs of it in the console later. It still doesn't intercept anything. And it's not, now it's not even there anymore. Okay then. Stopped, start running. Okay, there we go. Now it started, right? So we have it running. That's working. Okay. So, try that again. Theoretically, that should work. But for whatever reason, it actually doesn't. Question why the hell it doesn't work? Um, so let's try this. I'll lock. Activate it. I'm just curious. It should do something, right? So we update that. Does log activate it? Why doesn't it intercept fetch? That um is that because of the static thing? Here's the question. Wait a second. So I'm it might be the scoping issue because the service workers are scoped, right? Else, if path name worker JS, because this is why we required this in the first place, right? Your name, uh, parent. Oh, uh, wait a second. Static, static path name. There you go. Okay. It might as well be the scoping problem. So we are gonna see if that actually helps it. I still want to know how to clean the service worker's pain because <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay. Um, my Where's my worker? The one that was alive. Thank you very much. Update running. Yes. Reload. Okay. Now. Add. And we still don't see anything. Stop. So if I start it, we should see activate. Right? No, we don't. Not anymore. Wait a second. Does it actually? Oh, I know why. I know why. I know why. We 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 unregister all that. How do I? Here storage unregister. So yeah. So we clean everything. Now the question is, why is it still here? Do I like just reopen it? Is that is that what I need to do? Okay. Now it actually works. Okay, there we go. 
All right, so that was the problem. Okay, so we got this, we got the service worker. Um, focus. Okay, so it runs on roots now, right? And uh, theoretically, no, so this stuff, uh, we want applications, we got the console now, stop it, and then we start it, and it does not even activate anymore. It doesn't activate anymore. Well, if I know, so it should serve the static one, right? Let me have a look at the source code for the worker. Um, next. Style, pages, components, worker JS. It's not even here anymore, I guess, because it's. There you go, there's our worker. That looks like the correct one. Okay. Is it not even activated anymore? Here's the. Not even in the console anymore. Updates. I am so confused right now. Okay. Do we need to, we don't really need to provide any scopes or anything, right? But why do you not log anything? Similar. Right, so it doesn't have anything, not log anything. Oh my god, why didn't you log anything? Uh, new fetch, let's try this. So we got this, right? What I want to do for activate. Waiting to activate. Um, what if I unregister that? So we now have the new one, right? Okay, now we get activated. Maybe it was some caching problem. Got the fetch, but like, um, no, that's not what I wanted. Where's the big button? We only have activated here. Why don't you log the fetch? What is going on? What am I missing? Well, at all event wait until. So this is caching initialization, right? Pass along the promise. Yes, yes. That. Why the hell doesn't it listen for the fetch? Oops. Service workers. An introduction. All right, let's have a look at the documentation. Maybe I am missing something very obvious. Life cycle. This is what we want, right? Make it slightly smaller. Um, installing, waiting, activating, manual updates, avoid change of URL, making development easy, update and reloads, keep waiting, shift reload, ending updates. We got install, activate, Client claims. You can take control of uncontrolled client by client claim. And we are controlling the client, right? Or are we? That's, um, activate it. It should control. There's the worker thread. Seems fine. And this. Is it maybe not claims the client? Is that the problem? Yeah, so it is active. That is good. Cache open. So this is caching. This is active. Fetch. Yes. Like this is exactly what we do, but why the hell doesn't it work? Check out the demo of the above. Page source. Navigator to register. Okay, so we are just doing that. Yes, okay. A 
maybe we need this client's claim thing creation of a demo above okay new page source uh okay so this is a thing that should be inside of the service worker itself what am i missing so off of your updates Station, service worker there's our sv open okay um oh maybe that's why so you have to explicitly claim the client and then it will work is that how it works now i have the claim oh there we go now it works okay so we're just not claiming client automatically for some reason and now it no longer yes it does okay so there's our fetch right so um we basically need to say f equals what's the url there's uh notes right this is the notes okay so how do i know if the server's worker is offline check if service worker is offline okay so we were not claiming client that's the problem best practices for detecting offline state yes this is what we want so we got this scope thing i'll fetch origin uh, do i just like try request and if it fails then i mean that's one option right so we just try it and then if it fails catch offline url okay yeah okay so you may basically just do the uh fetch and what we did before wait a second so i so we do this catch right catch the error and then basically what i'm gonna do you know what i'm just gonna put the database and i guess we could create an index db uh, so okay index db service work let's look for an example current data within yeah but that doesn't show me how to create an index db library um index db ipm there you go okay okay we're almost there that is taking way longer than i expected but we are gonna finish it i'm as i said there's probably gonna be a second one but we are gonna finish it storing images and files to do notifications their basic concepts using index db that's what we want um index db index db index db blah 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 opening database okay so it should be just index db right not id um aim events wait for create db right so this is what we wanted that if we reload that my mouse come on mouse you just disconnect come on stop it no oh. okay um br 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 text did not match so reloads there are any errors doesn't oh i guess they did it update it properly let me just wipe everything reload there are some errors and wait for is not functioning um, what was it i completely forgot and wait until okay. but i guess we don't really care about that right it's just like initialization not even promise so it should be fine reload console okay that seems to be working so basically what we need to do now is yes first of all we have to look how the request looks right because i have no idea how does the body there looks we are gonna do this engine it is gonna be in the first body used so how do i get the body post there's url okay is it in request in event itself 
because we do need to extract a body. I wonder if that's possible at all. I mean, imagine it is. But let's see. Edge events is trusted path target current target. Got the requests. We got the body used there, and is there a prototype something like? There's a blob. Oh, I guess it's okay. So it's in the thing. So event request, right? And if it catches, so const body is gonna be event request JSON. Is that the thing? Yes, it's a sync as well. Log body. Now it works. Not hundred percent sure that is correct, but we're gonna find out in a second. Okay, so we got a new fetch. Oh, it doesn't fail, right? Okay. Um, we're gonna go offline now. Try to send the same request again. Fetch uncaught body stream already read. Uh huh. Okay, let's see how do we actually get the body from the fetch. So service worker worker failed fetch body. So as you can see, the service workers are not exactly simple, but they are quite powerful. Does this fail to execute fetch? No, that's not what I want. Earning failed fetch promises. So this is caching, then caching, and uh, this is not what we want. All fetch, fetch, then response. Actually, first do that, and uh, okay. Here's the question. So we got the prototype. Has a bunch of functions. Text mode method refer cat. Those are all fields of the fetch request, right? But we can get body because it was already got like during the was sent during the request. So you actually. Yes, that's not is that not possible to do with a service worker like locally store the things you have to do it within the app itself okay um fine eva via storage am i just misunderstanding the way it works and it's like not actually you cannot actually do it this way I mean, caching API, yeah, fine. That's that's fine. Web workers everywhere. Service workers now available in Chrome. Blah blah blah. Synchronous have no web workers. Web scale file API. Yeah yeah yeah. Whatever. Does it work? And storage. So it seems like you should indeed use your own storage for that. Which means we don't actually need a separate worker here. Kill that. Cats. Stop it. Hey. Yeah. Just stop this crap. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, cats going nuts here. Okay, so it looks like basically the service worker is only used to cache files. And then if we want to cache um whoops, that is too much. We want to cache requests we actually have to do it manually right so not the cache but to say basically what we need to do here is we need to say catch error right and if there is an error we're gonna say that we need to store it for future uh save so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna say local storage set no local storage is is a bad idea for that so what kind of wait a second Local store um bm local storage. We need some. I mean, index db might be a nice, nice option here, right? So we have web piece. 
got this local storage. Wait a second. So index D, what? There was index DB, there was cap DB, but I think one of them, I, whatever. Let's just go with, oh, you know what? Uh, we can just use the something like pouch DB, right? I don't think like pouch DB or maybe something. Yeah, why not? Let's just go for pouch DB. Guides. Um, so, yarn add pouch. What's the setting up? No, we don't need pouch DB. We don't need replication. We're gonna do it manually. Yarn add pouch DB. Right. Okay. So basically, yeah, what we need to do is we import PouchDB yeah, from PouchDB. And after we've done that, we are, I guess we're gonna initialize it somehow. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, we did that. Uh, working with databases. So we are gonna have a separate const after imports would be a better place. RHDB notes, right? And I think it's going to be something like DB insert or whatever. I don't care about info. Debug, we don't care about that. Working with documents, that's what we want. Uh, put doc. Okay, and uh, we need underscore ID here. So I guess we are going to, yeah, I mean, why not? Let's just say so DB put uh note right so we just add note there i think return note so we just put it into database uh for caching purposes essentially and once the next request comes through we actually is gonna be a new note new node so we are going to do this i'm going to say to do send all hashed nodes to server right this is what we need to do uh, i mean we can i guess we can do it now get can you get all or like get all put get get um Fetch a document. There, get all document. Fetch, fetch. All docs. There we go. Const all docs, right? Um, sync. Then we need to say await promise all, all docs map doc to fetch. Notes. We gonna gonna move that out into the config, right? So that we have one for all of them. Config. Config, and uh, that's actually it. That's all we need to do. So we just oh right um. Not exactly what we need to do. Okay, not not completely. So we get this fetch config this way and body, right? This is what we fetch config and body is gonna be JSON stringify nodes equals doc. I guess we can just call it node here. Now. Um, did I mess something up? So this is oh yeah, we got this. There we go. um yeah okay calling it node would overlap with uh fire yeah this looks fine okay so yeah basically whenever what we do is if we fail the request we just throw it into the database and then we actually we need to remove error remove all save attachment list why is not scrolling like no why why don't you ah! okay Remove, remove documents. I have to manually remove each and every one of them. Okay then, I guess 
We are going to make it slightly more complicated because the API for this database are not exactly nice. Okay, so we got that. We fetch, wait fetch, and then we do await db remove stock. We clean it up. Okay. This should do it. All right. And uh, theoretically, oh, yeah, I'm offline mode, I think. Fun. So, what we have to do now is we have to say yarn build. We build that stuff. Then we started in production mode, which will run the service worker. We should probably wipe the current service workers as well. Move that stuff. Yarn serve, right? We have the serve method here. Reload that. So we got our service worker registered and nice. Now we can go offline. Oh, so first of all, let's try to new test notes, online notes. Just enter something. I'm gonna add this, add. And there's an error because I screwed something up. Uh, ID required for puts. Um, God damn it. Oh, why are you trying to put when you are are you failing? Wait a oh, right. Okay. No, wait. We are not putting anything. It's... Ah, okay. Okay, no. That's what we want. Uh, let me rebuild that. Um, I guess we should probably test it first without all that stuff, right? I think I just, yeah, screwed up. So I'm asynca waits and then this is why it doesn't properly insert stuff. So we should test that it actually inserts everything nicely. Debug modes. Okay. Custom pouch error, missing ID, ID required for puts. How are you calling put? I am not putting anything. Console error E, okay. Try that again. All dogs map is not a function. Okay. Um, if all dogs. Right. Okay. So it doesn't return an empty array, but it returns undefined if there are no dogs. All dogs map is not a function. How the. All dogs. Oh, rows. Okay. Ah, I see. So it has a other format. There we go. This is what we want. So theoretically. Okay, there we go. Now it works. Yes, yeah, we can just leave that here. So yarn build. Okay, last step. And then we can just stop this stream for today and continue next week to add the push notifications and uh, manifest and install it to desktop essentially. Okay, or maybe we can do it today, I don't know, let's see. Yes, that's not that hard. Like push notifications are really trivial and then manifesto is as well pretty, I mean, it's just one file essentially. <laughs> you need some sort of an icon, but uh, okay. So we add stuff, right? Uh, I'm gonna do this. Uh, that's it. Okay, so now we go offline. We're... How are you not working? We're supposed to be working. Oh, where's my service worker, first of all? There is a service worker now. Yes, there is. So why? It is registered now. Okay. Offline, right? Now it works. Okay. Cool. I guess it didn't get registered first time or something. So test um test offline notes. That is that is a very very large date. Add notes, okay. Missing underscore ID. Okay, so here this time around is gonna be E. 
node estate nodes there you go okay so we did that um uh, rebuild that serve and in theory so we are now service worker is there so if we now go offline reload we still work so test offline nodes right test 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 uh, we enter some dates it adds rest fails id must contain a string god damn it <laughs> we have to be like this okay let's try this again arm build <laughs> oh man I don't even remember. I, I don't think I've used PowerHDB that much. I think I've always ended up using something because of those little annoying things it has. Sure. I'm gonna go online. We're gonna refresh. It's gonna reload everything, right? We got the service worker. I'm gonna go offline again. Refresh. Test offline notes. There you go. Uh, no. Seven. Thing adds. Edge failed. But theoretically, in our database, the question is where the hell does it store it? Probably index DB, right? Okay, that's the pouch nodes, version 5. And where is my documents? And there's our document. And it works. Okay. So in theory, if we now go online, uh, where's my network? There we go. Now go online to say, okay, test online note. So first of all, we should have the offline note here. It does exist. Yay, it actually works. <laughs> all right, that took way longer than I wanted. Um, add notes. And we should now have two requests. There's actually one request. Where's my second request? Yes, something went wrong. Where's my all docs? This is all docs, right? ID value. What the hell does all docs get? Fetch a batch of documents. Yeah, so how do I work with that? All docs include. All right. Good docs, then results, rows, doc. Okay. So this is doc, and then there's going to be uh, results. So there's going to be rows, then there's going to be doc. This is going to be like this. Ah, uh, no, but we need the whole doc, right? It's going to be doc, doc. And I think that's now, okay. Oh man, okay. Some of those API designs are questionable to say the least, not very developer friendly. It's like you expect it to work in one way because most of the databases do this and then this thing just works completely differently. All right, so we still, I think has this thing in a database. Yeah, so theoretically if we now do a request, Test. we should okay so now we actually have doc here docs length and docs length is more than one right so where's the second request um so Okay, so we do the uh, fetch config, we do that. We have the body, which says node seems correct. So why doesn't it? The log saving doc. Okay. The, again, yarn build, yarn serve.
Right, there we go. So we are now sending something. There is still only one request. And for whatever reason, doesn't seem okay is it that it doesn't have it's not an array what it return no it is an array right it has length one okay a log saving docs all docs it's actually go into debug mode right now because we have the cache document there anyway because the only thing that doesn't work in debug is the offline right Come on. There we go. Uh, finish post and okay. So how the hell? All docs length. Oh, got. <laughs> okay, I am a bit too tired, I think. There we go. All right, so if I do that now. Um and custom poacher not found missing reason deleted saving what is deleted what are you trying to do where is that coming from sixty three error why is there an error there wait a second but send the post request right so we did send the posts there's the second notes there it is. We got test offline, no. Okay, so it did send it correctly. And I guess we need to delete this ID and ref from there. So, to, 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 to. I'm gonna be used a mid, but let's just use notes to, yes, note to save, right? right let's call it this way. Uh, I'm gonna copy the object and I'm gonna delete node to save. E. Gonna delete ref so so that we have nice clean object. Save. Doc. I guess I need to do this. So I guess I can do this way, right? And then we can remove this dog dog bonkers and e. Maybe that works. Okay, but we still have this document in there. Yes, we do. All right. And uh, not found missing. Um. So why are you missing? Tell me. Console saving saving doc. Okay, so it does have underscore ID, right? Is there two of them now? Oh, right, okay, I guess because, um, yeah, let's swipe everything. Might be the problem with the cache. There we go, we wiped everything. Yarn, uh, nah, yarn build, yarn serve. All right, if you guys have any questions along the way, feel free to ask them. But uh, yeah, that's been way longer than I expected. It's like nearly two hours already. It's, it's actually two hours exactly. About time I stop this because this is quite draining. Okay, uh, so we go offline. We go test offline. Uh, whoops, offline uh, bleh, note something something. And okay, so it failed, but it's correctly handled. And now we go online and we do ASD ASD ASD. Blah, 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 send it. And end status, so it actually fails to delete it for whatever reason. That damn it, database, what are you doing now again? That indexDB, we got pouch nodes, we got two of them here. Okay, so we can kill that because it's saved. We can go into the. Okay, let's see, remove, right? So remove takes. No, not attachment. Move doc ID, doc. Oh, you need to. Ah, okay. Doc underscore rev. How it works? Will you work this way?
and indexdb went bad perfect that is just great user experience no what i'm not using anymore pouchdb patient cache clear that service workers so indexdb is now empty okay darn build come on serve so we do this test offline notes. Seven this and go offline. We try to send it. it. Still adds because we are good and we're handling the request correctly. Now we do this and send note again. And looks like it's finally freaking working after all this suffering with PouchDB. Um still has okay, it just says deleted. It doesn't even delete stuff from the Next to be that's interesting approach, but okay. I guess it needs it for synchronization. Right? Refresh it. We have all of them there, nice and easy. Okay, in invalid date. Finally, okay. Let me just commit that really quickly. Um, remove yarn error. One. Do I have anything in static? Actually, I have the worker that we don't use. Right, we can just remove it. What is nodes thing? Where does this come from? We don't need it. Okay. Add basic offline functionality. You know what? I feel like we should just finish it here today. And uh, no, I mean, not like stop the stream, but actually finish all the features because we are basically only lacking two things. Number one is the manifest, which I killed the static folder, but we would actually need it. And uh, what we need is VA manifest. Actually, probably borrow this one because I mean it's just a JSON file that describes your app, right? Um, da -da 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 -da, what's the name of it? It's like manifest web manifest. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna borrow this structure. Um, we do need an icon. Why? I mean, I can just probably hijack. I mean, that's just, you know what? I'm gonna be lazy as hell and I'm just gonna copy this icon. Downloads icon PNG to static. Obviously you want your icon, right? And loan, so this uh, notes PVI example. Call it node a simple nodes p that sounds about right background color theme that sounds fine now we need to add that um i closed it a bit too fast so we need to add that manifest to the meta tag so that um the browser actually knows that it should pick it up uh, do they use the layout here as well okay so Let's have a look at the layout. And this is, we should probably, I should just copy all those meta tags from here. Oh yeah, it's probably a good idea to note that uh, progressive web apps typically mean that your web app is mobile friendly. I'm gonna have the description. This is gonna be a uh, simple notes. Okay. We got the manifest, we got theme color, we got the icons, so this is a we default that stuff right so we got the meta tags um yarn start so theoretically that is not canary right so i can show you something really cool in a second come on there you go so we now have the logo here now about the cool thing so if we go to chrome canary I don't know if they've added actually the Chrome recently updated. Maybe it's already in the live, but um, I know for a fact that it is in Canary. I'm going to show you it here. So in the Canary now, you can enable the desktop applications. And uh, this is how it works. So you will actually see the plugin here. And if you open, nah, okay, wait a second. It actually doesn't work the way I expected it to be. Okay. Desktop. 
yes. So the thing is that you can actually um yeah, a banner is an experimental API. So wait, da, 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 that is not what I want. I want a guide on how to do that. Uh, better user reduce load times, PVA rocks. Okay. Be progressive fab app. Um, add to home screen, Dex app. Maybe we're missing something from our manifest. Is that the case? And in this case, even if you find blah, blah blah, okay. And have the back disabled. Oh, maybe that's because of the. Wait a second. Maybe because we need to be in production. Is that the case? Turn serve. It might be that it again doesn't add some uh, required things. Basically, on. It should have installed applications. There we go. So okay, this is how it should look. Now here's the magic. Uh, where's my my link? Oh come on. Apps. Where's my link? There we go. Look at this. This is a completely separate window that has its own icon in the launch bar that will work offline. That is obviously responsive. Well, very shitly because I coded it and I'm terrible with layouting. But still, this is. A pure progressive web app running out of browser, but on Chrome without Electron or anything else in literally one button click. And this is coming to Chrome in a few months, I guess, because it's now in Canary behind the flag, but you can still enable it. And this is really, really awesome, I think. Okay. I'm going to, um, so what is these notes and where did it comes from? I'm going to keep it. Oh, I guess it's maybe the server side rendered index DB thing because we're using the pouch DB, right? Okay. Get add, um, get. Okay. Get commits, add manifest. Okay, manifest. And uh, last thing we are going to do is implement push notifications. Service worker, and in this case, we actually we are going to need our own service worker. So I think I have uh, removed the old one a bit too hastily. So we are gonna put it back, um, and we are gonna tweak the server again. Um, let's call it push worker. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say that you should serve it from worker. Or I guess that's let's call it components. Yeah, let's call it components pass name, right? So we're gonna have a push worker JS. Right? And in this case, we are gonna register a second worker here. And actually, yeah, why, why not? Like push. I call it push worker. And uh, I guess we can just do this reg push. This is the last thing we're going to do. And now we're going to have a look at the tutorial because hell if I remember how to do that. So um, yeah, we registered the service worker We already did that. That is all good and stuff. Um, you do need to get your basically keys. So your application needs a push server and uh, you can get, for example, a free Google uh, push service key for that. All right, push manager. Uh, so we need to initialize this thing. Um, drag push, right? Push manager, get subscription. It's up. So we are gonna messing things up. I am ready too tired for that, but we're gonna finish it anyway. So const is subscribed, if not subscribed, update button. And I guess we can just say um, this set state subscribed, right? So that is a very weird way saying subscription not equal zero, what we want. This, so, and this is gonna say is subscribed false. 
gonna say here so we're gonna say right question mark button I guess no I guess we can just have a button anyway last name button subscribe to notifications so this is gonna be is this state is subscribed right and if we are not if we are subscribed so it's gonna be unsubscribe then we're gonna have subscribe from uh, to notification I guess yeah say from notifications uh so there we go I should have a um, where starts that is actually should work right no it won't actually work because the first registration will throw okay you have to go no. theory um that as well okay resource worker 404 and um, why does it 404 push worker I, I restart no i didn't restart the server that's why okay we got the push worker components push worker js that seems to be correct now it should register it uh no it does not why worker push worker js yes your name components components push worker okay. uh, let's just hard code that maybe i'm just mistyping something and not seeing it already because um push worker yes yes on Build bad HTTP 404. What am I doing wrong? Path name service worker. Maybe it, oh, maybe it doesn't like that it's in a component. Case. Wonder if it somehow transpiles them. Um, I guess we can put it. Oh, but that should be a problem. Put it into static. Static. Okay, that work. Oh, we have our button there for sure. Come on. And cool. User is not subscribed, so now we have this button, and we need to uh, trigger subscription on it, right? So, I think the. Uh, toggle notifications neat so it's going to be on the click going to be this toggle notifications right so if this state is subscribed return here and if not subscribed we're gonna subscribe okay so uh, disable enable yes service worker um to initialize ui whatever so how do i enable disable them subscribe user update user subscription on the server yeah so we do need so this is what we're interested in um it's very so we need to store that registration say i'm gonna say this push right so this is gonna be we need our public key we're gonna do that um <clears throat> all right so we need the public key and uh, do they have a guide where to get it here be very nice to get it right away real web server for chrome blah 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 
No, that's not what I want. Push code lab. Hey, um, get application server keys. Yeah, okay. Push companion. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so they even have this nice, nice UI here for testing. Cool. I'm gonna hard code that. You can go ahead and uh, get your own. So I'm gonna add the comment here. Push keys can be fetched from. Copy this. Okay, so we got that. Yeah, I think private key should be on the server, right? Because we don't care about that. Application server key, so we can use a shorthand here. Description. Um, this set states is subscribed to. So and about this, we don't care. About this, we can just do this stuff, right? I mean, in theory, you obviously want to render those errors on the screen, but uh, for now, it is absolutely okay. All right, so let's see. We did that. We did that. So we use our thing. Subscribe. Yes, yes, yes. So where's our update on server? Yeah, here you go. So. Um. Yeah, we can actually description await this, right? Then I know, but then we have to try cache. Yeah, that's fine. So we can basically remove this async thing here. Go with that. Date subscription on server. Um query selector j subscription JSON. What is that? Why do we need that? X content. Okay, this seems to be just doing some UI stuff. Lock date on server subscription, right? So and this should be this. Okay. So theoretically, you press this button. Um, okay, URL B64. What is this and where does this come from? Um, we've already given you the function at the top of script main JS. Well, you have not given it to me, so give it. Where's that example thing? Looks like it just converts it to a byte array or something. Oh, why don't you can just give me a link to GitHub? Um, app scripts main JS open with. Lime and there it is. It does indeed just convert it to uint array. Okay, very straightforward. I'm just gonna put it over here. Ons change it to arrow function. All right. There we go. So we allow notifications, and we are now subscribed. If I refresh, we are gonna be indeed subscribed which is great. Okay, so now, whoops, I closed that a bit too quick. We need that. Uh, so now we need to tell the server that we are subscribed, right? So we need to tell the server our subscription information. Actually unsubscribe. Um, oh yeah, we, we don't have unsubscribe code yet. Right now, but we should be able to um, application if we clear everything, right? I will clear the permissions. Subscribe. I can read property push master of. Oh, I guess I was too fast. On. We should wipe everything again and uh, wait until the service worker actually registers itself because pressing it too quickly won't do any good. Okay, do we have the service worker? Yes. Okay. Right. right, and there you go. So basically your subscription is the endpoint that will be used for push, expiration time, and some additional user options. Right, so um, try it out. Now, where's our, try it out. Yeah, so this is the handle permissions, try it out. And we'll push events. So this is gonna be our uh, push worker. 
So essentially, it has the service worker has a push event um, event. Well, I mean, it is an event. And it's basically going to be a push that is received. And you're going to, you can apply icons, body, whatever. So in this case, we're going to just going to go for um, nodes PVA. And put the body, which is going to be event data text. I think on text, we can just do this. Say text, right? That's actually all we need. So if I type everything again, reload the page, subscribe, and I think we can simulate push using this service worker. So, uh, no, not I know it does receive it. So, where is my notification? Is it, is it on my second screen? Oh, right. I, Disable notifications. Okay, <laughs> of course. And it is on my second screen. Okay, so, but uh, that actually works. Uh, you have to trust, oh no, that's the other one. No, remind me later, Docker. So if I uh, just make sure, is it, can I move it somehow here? Ah, there you go. Okay, now it's here. Pull, see, there you go. So it actually works. You don't even have to have a server. Now, the way it works on server is, um, so I guess we need additional methods post, say, uh, so push, right? Reply. So I'm gonna kill those because we don't need them. On uh, subscriptions. So you do need some sort of a database to store the subscriptions and uh, subscriptions push body subscription and reply sent as true. Okay, so we got that. We handle this. Uh, do they have an example of server site? Here, sending push messages. There we go. That's what we want. Uh, okay, this is the example from there. Okay, and this is how we unsubscribe. So we should do this here. If we are subscribed, we are going to do this. So it's going to be this push registration. Subscription unsubscribe. Otherwise, can error, error log. Now, um, yes, so we need to send Node.js sends push service worker. I think there was a library for that, that basically web push. Yeah, I think it is it this one. I've used one of them, but I am not sure which one was it. Let's see, so what does it need? So it needs the, uh, okay, this is the API key. This is the subscription. Let's try that. So I think it's it should work. Yarn adds web push. We need that web push in the server, right? And then we we'll say, okay, const private push key is gonna be this thing here. And um, so then we say generate it keys. Okay, I don't know why we need that, but that is fine. And trigger it somewhere here. Oh no, I guess in run could be fine, right? Web push set wapi details. We need that. Uh, okay, this is our private key. Mail example domain. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. And then we just do this, right? First, so we're gonna say make you body subscription. Hello world. So I mean, in this case, obviously, um, this is a very simple example. So we're gonna say push is it slash push? Yes. Gonna be um, methods post. 
on uh, no headers ah come on content type application json and we need the body will be json if i perception okay uh then json whoops Eight. Oh, whoops, that should be a sync. No, 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 no. Press wait. Log. Done. Press wait. It's gonna complain that this hates. I'm gonna do this so it stops complaining. It's actually bad, and I should modify my ESLint because it's annoying from time to time. But uh, whatever, we can just, I guess we can just move that function out of the class because we already need it to be in a class, right? Put it here. And a sync. Looks good. So update subscription on server. Uh, this. And uh, yarn start. If I didn't screw anything up, I should enable the notifications now. Hopefully nothing spams me at this moment. I'm gonna clear data. Reload it. Okay, uh, no, it didn't seem to clear everything. Clear it. Reload. So now we're not, so now we will subscribe. And received unexpected response code. It might be that this is not a GCM key. So this is might be why it's not actually working. Um, add push subscription here. How do I, do I copy paste the... Okay, so I have to copy paste the whole damn thing here. Network. What do they actually use? Wait a second. We can have a look at there because they have this app here, right? It is to send push messages. Use libraries available here. Web push libs. Web push. Yeah, it is web push. Okay. Private key. Um, code for this on glitch. Let's go have a look at the code here. Okay. Uh, send message GS. Application server. A crypto. Oh, maybe we need to encrypt the key somehow. Uh, display the keys, update the keys. Nice keys. Okay, we got the index.js, right? We got the text to send, and then we're gonna press the button. And where's the function that actually does something? It's in the script and message. And then we got app.js, and there's the web push. Okay, web push, send notification, subscription, data, options. Uh, subject, public key, private key, okay. Public, private. Okay, so this is this is the options, I see. So we are just doing it slightly wrong with uh, web push. Okay. Um, we actually don't need any of that stuff. We need to say... Options, rapid details, this, okay, so and then uh, we're gonna have the public key, private key, right, private key, and then, I mean, we can store the public key here as well, because why the hell not? Public push key. I think that basically should work. Um, I private push key. PDL one hour, and uh, this is options go to the last option. Here you go. So in theory, if we start it now and do the same register on register again, we should get a notification immediately. 
And there you go. Perfect. We are basically now progressive web app, although a very terrible one. And <laughs> the one that took three hours to write. Okay. Let me commit that. And uh, meanwhile, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, as usual, you can ask on in the comments. It adds git commits at push notification port. All right, um, this is done finally. That took way longer than I thought it would, but uh, well, that was that was interesting. I mean, I didn't know there were so many limitations with regard to fetch handling. I never actually used it beyond caching the resources, but now I know that actually. You cannot do what I imagined you could by just intercepting everything and replying whatever the hell you want on them. I guess that's expected. All right. Uh, first of all, we need to create a new repo here and uh, push stuff there, right? So I probably need the readme.js there. Um, let's notes EVA with serv uh, service workers push and offline or okay uh, so we did that we need readme touch the probably close it a bit too early doesn't seem like there are any questions, so it's good. I'm just going to add a readme, <clears throat> add a readme and uh, wrap it up here basically because we are essentially done. Um, da -da 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 -da. How do I get the readme here? I hear that my voice is already a bit cranky because I've been doing this for almost three hours. Holy shit, that is too long. Temple notes okay with I, I can copy that from the github why does they never have it unless you push something you see uh where was it even no uh, no i don't want to do that now get up sort off okay you know what i'm just gonna push stuff and then I'm going to see my slogan. I'm going to copy it and paste it here. All right. Go. Okay. Tutorial on building PVA, simple PVA. You can call it materials really uh, used for building a with service workers video and I need a later project description simple PA shows how to use service workers for Offline support push notifications. Um, that's basically it, right? I sort of really need that list here. Offline support and push notifications. There you go. All right. Uh, running projects are the Build projects using builds. Start server using starts. Um, navigate to e local host thousand using. Browser of your choice. EVAs worker. Links for PVA and link for service workers. I think the Google had the best stuff. 
occur. Um, which is the Google link. There we go. Here, and we're gonna. Yeah, a good link. Service worker. All right. Mid at readme. Uh, whoops. Hit push. Cool. We are essentially done here. So looks like there are no questions. So thank you for staying with me the whole way through. That was that was pretty damn long. Like three hours of solid coding and suffering with service workers because I didn't know some bits of it. But we finished it and you know it's an offline capable progressive web app uh, with push notifications and support for item synchronization after you come online uh, you know when you was offline so it's all good uh all working i mean we didn't do like exactly like 100 percent of things so there's obviously ways to improve it but it was a good work yeah it was pretty fun Right, so I guess we could stop here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.